are back and always excited to talk to Coach Brian Kelly on this Monday before Thanksgiving, Monday before LSU takes on A&M uh, off a big win over the weekend. Coach, good afternoon. I know you're, you're always glad to get that uh, game before the final game out of the way. Uh, it looked pretty good from where I was watching. Yeah, I was pleased with, uh, you know, these are tough games, as you know, you know, stepping outside the SEC uh, against a non-power for, power t- five team. And, you know, Georgia State, uh, bowl eligible, a good football team. Uh, you know, certainly uh, you always are concerned about uh, the the preparation of your team mentally. And I thought we did a nice job. And it's certainly good to have number five on your team, Jaden Daniels. He kind of... Um, takes care of uh, business for you as well when it comes to scoring points. I know, Coach, you uh, started your career uh, dabbling a little bit in in politics, and I'm wondering uh, if if you could use some of that political acumen, uh, other than having to coach a game this week, to uh, help shape his campaign. Because, I mean, I think everyone that I know acknowledges he's the best player, but the politics of the Heisman race definitely enter into it. Yeah, certainly. Uh, look, I think that, you know, I've been outspoken, um, you know, in this uh, Heisman year because I, you know, think that just watching this young man play, um, he's been the best player uh, and it hasn't been, in my opinion, close. He has taken over games in a manner that I have not seen in my 30 plus years. Um, and he's been decisive. He's thrown the ball down the field with great accuracy. You know, he's, he doesn't have the cupcake throws where he's throwing screens and adding yardage. His yardage is real. Um, he doesn't slide. I mean, he's probably slid in three or four times. He's got toughness. He's playing football. And and so, um, you know, I'm going to give it uh, every chance I have to talk about his candidacy. And, you know, if it, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. He still is the best player in college football this year. We'll move on to, to this weekend, and uh, this was a game last year. You, you guys had really had a, an amazing year, and uh, you, you went out to College Station, and it got away from you. Uh, yep. How does that factor into this weekend? It's certainly a unique situation with uh, Coach Fisher already gone. Yeah, the circumstances are different. We did not handle – we were not mature enough to handle success. We had already won the SEC West, and uh, we just did not handle the success that we had – gotten in such an early stage of our development in our process um, we're in a different place uh, we're in our second year um, this football team's a lot more mature but look Texas A&M is a really good football team uh, regardless of, of what has happened uh, with their leadership uh, it doesn't diminish who they have on the field <laughs> this is an outstanding football team it leads the SEC in defense um, they're talented uh, in, in all, all phases um, outstanding skill players, and, and it's a rivalry game. They're going to play their very best. This is um, this is the way it is when it's Texas A&M against LSU. So uh, it'll be a great challenge for a football team, and uh, one, quite frankly, that uh, they're looking forward to. We're talking uh, to Coach Brian Kelly, Coach. You mentioned it a week or two ago about you, know, you, you recalibrate goals at this point in the season. We mentioned the individual part of it with with Jaden, you have other outstanding players across the board, but from a, from a team concept, knowing that uh, you won't be where you were a year ago in that championship game, how, how do you address that with your team in terms of what is left for them and how to keep them focused in on, on the prize? So we're in year two of building a program. Um, now, what's the model? The model is the consistency in which Georgia – uh, and Kirby Smart and Alabama and Nick Saban has been they've been able to put together uh, 10 win plus seasons year in and year out that's what we're looking to do uh, we want to be able to put uh, a back-to-back 10 win season together and those are uh, the underpinnings or the foundational uh, pieces that you're looking for and consistency in your program so this is an important game. This gives us a chance to work towards another 10-win season. And, and you can't get there unless you're putting together these kinds of seasons. Even with a couple of stumbles this year, you know, we've had a great win on the road against Missouri. Um, you know, we fell in, in uh, on the road against uh, Mississippi and Alabama uh, and in a neutral site game, which really was a home game against uh, Florida State. These are all top 10 teams. So uh, we had our stumbles. 
uh, but we have a chance to win 10. And, and that is foundational in terms of building it uh, back to back years. I know this may be a better question uh, a week down the road because you, you, you have you, it's game week and you're getting ready for an opponent. But as you start to inch toward the end of the regular season, uh, how do you or what has been your pattern in the past of self-evaluation, of, of team evaluation? Because I'm sure there's a lot of things that are that are running around in your mind that you're hit, you, it's hard to hit a pause on. But I'm sure you're thinking about it as the season begins to wind down. Oh, absolutely, Paul. Look, we're going to have a lot of balls up in the air at the end of the season because, you know, you're looking at certainly, uh, first and foremost, recruiting is happening, you know, and that's a fluid situation, as you know, during the season. Um, certainly, you're looking at um, the transfer portal, uh, and, and then you're looking at retention uh, amongst your own players. So, all three of those things are fluid and and they're happening in real time they're not happening you know okay today i'm just going to talk about retention tomorrow i'm just going to talk about recruiting all three of those things have to happen at, at at a simultaneous rate and so for us you know what is the priority i think last year it might have been uh, we needed to be strong in the portal, and we, we had to be because of the, the state of our program. We had to take 15 in the transfer portal. That won't be the case this year. This will be much more about recruiting the players that are currently on our roster to come back. So this will be about retention. So all three of those things will take place next week, but there'll be a priority in terms of what happens and, and where our, our focus will be of those three things. Finally, Coach, with that portal window opening and then you have National Signing Day, uh, I mean, that is a lot to manage. Uh, you you lived through this two years ago, and I'm sure you don't even want to think about the, that those nightmarish weeks when you were trying to move from, from South Bend down to, to Baton Rouge and handle all that. But, but what – I mean, I know you prepare for it, but – what, what when the, when the, when that green light goes i mean what is it like in in the in the in the middle of it so um as i said it it feels like you're juggling three things at once right the transfer portal guys that that may want to go into it what you're doing in it so that's the first part and so we've directed our our player personnel office to also be like an nfl board as well where they're uh, they've done advanced scouting on those that are on other rosters that that may potentially go into the portal. So we have to be, you know, aware of who may go in. You also have to know your own roster, who may want to go into the transfer portal. Maybe they're they're not getting the kind of time, and you've got to be able to have exit interviews next week and and find that out. So uh, a lot of that kind of gets vetted out over the next five five days or so. Uh, as well as your freshman recruiting, which happens, you know, um, you know, throughout the entire year. So it'll be a, it'll be a pretty busy week uh, as as we go through the uh, the end of the season. Well, you you'll get to relax this week because we're all taking Thursday off. Excuse me, I, that will not apply to you, I'm sure. No, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll practice in the morning uh, and let the kids get out of here uh, because most of them, as you know, are from Louisiana. They'll get a chance to go home with their families. If not, we'll take them in uh, with our coaches. But uh, we'll get in early, and then, as you know, we got an 11 a.m. start on Saturday, so uh, it'll be a quick turnaround here in Baton Rouge. Well, Coach, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we hope you have a great week down there, and we'll talk to you very soon. You too. Thanks, Paul. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Thanks.